So now we get back to the interpretation and intuition of the different components in the Kalman filter. There's the Kalman gain, the innovation, and its covariance. A key to be able to do this is to understand this density, the density of the predicted measurement given observations up to the previous time instance k minus 1, which we can show is a Gaussian distribution like this, where the mean is hk, the measurement model matrix, times the predicted mean of the state, and sk is its covariance. It's easy to see that this product here is the mean using the observation model. So the observation model for our linear and Gaussian models is just yk equals to hk times xk plus some measurement noise r. By taking the expected value of this condition on the previous observations, so the expected value of yk conditioned on previous measurements, if we exchange yk using this expression here, we simply get which by definition is simply as rk here is zero mean. Now we see that the conditional expected value is by definition precisely this. So how can we interpret this? Well, we see that the expected value of our observation, given our previous observations, are just as hk times our predicted mean of the state. So this is what we expect the observation to be given all our previous observations. And we can also show that the covariance of yk here is sk. So sk describes our uncertainty in this. Now, if we look at the innovation vk, we see that it's equal to the current observation yk, where we remove what we expect the measurement should be based on our previous knowledge. As such, vk captures the new information in yk which we are not able to predict using our old information. And finally, when we calculate the updated mean, like this, the comma gain is the factor which will determine how much we should trust the innovation over our old information in the predicted mean. One can imagine, for example, that if our observations are very noisy, we would like the comma gain to be very small, close to zero such that we do not trust these measurements so much. So this factor here should be close to zero, such our posterior mean is more based on our predicted mean. We end with a self-assessment question, where I would like you to think about what are reasonable values for the Kalman gain in some specific scenarios. 